In this next video, we really want to focus on doing some examples of computing areas between curves. So we'll start by looking at the area between the curves for the functions f of x equals x cubed plus 2 and g of x equals 2 minus x on the interval from 1 to 4. So we know that uh, by definition, the area between the curves is this, abs is this integral of the absolute value of the difference of the functions. And so in order to figure out uh, how to kind of work with this absolute value here, it's generally going to be easier to think about which function is larger, because I want to take the larger function minus the smaller function. So we want to draw a picture here. And if we think about what these functions look like on the interval from 1 to 4, uh, we might have that f of x being x cubed plus 2. Uh, at the left end point, the y value is going to be 3. And at the right end point, the y value looks like it's going to be uh, 68. Uh, no, 66. 4 cubed is 64, plus 2 is 66. So it's going to be, uh, well, pretty high up there. Um, then the other function, g of x equals 2 minus x, is going to, at the left end point, uh, its y value is going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. So somewhere down there. And it has negative slope, so it's going to decrease. Uh, we also know that at the other end point, at x equals 4, it's going to have y value minus 2. So somewhere down there. Cool. So uh, I have my two functions drawn here, and in order to compute the area between these two curves, in order to compute the area of this kind of purple region here, uh, we're going to be looking at the integral of the larger function minus the smaller function. So I want to integrate from 1 to 4. My larger function is f of x here. My smaller function is g of x. And so I can go ahead and put the formulas for these two guys into this integral. So let's see, I've got integral from 1 to 4. Uh, f of x is x cubed plus 2. g of x is 2 minus x. And don't forget to include those parentheses there, because we want to subtract away the entire function g of x. We don't just want to subtract away the 2. Um, so make sure to have these parentheses here. They are important. All right, so now that we have uh, some integral of some function, we can do this with our fundamental theorem of calculus. So maybe first we want to combine some like terms here. Uh, we have the integral from 1 to 4. Of We have an x cubed. Uh, let's see, we have a plus x because we have a minus minus x. And then I have a 2 minus 2, so those are going to cancel and give me no constant term. Great, uh, so now this is going to be x to the 4 over 4 plus x squared over 2. Uh, that's my antiderivative. I want to evaluate from 1 to 4. And if you take the time to plug this into your calculator, you get, uh, not approximately, but exactly, 71.25. So we have uh, some amount of area here between these two curves. It works out to be 71.25 square units, I guess. Uh, since I didn't give you units for x or f of x or g of x, there's not really a way of giving this quantity here any kind of units. Um, if this were some kind of applied problem, maybe we would want to think about uh, what sort of units this has, but with just a couple of functions and some numbers, uh, there's not really a lot of meaning to this, to this value here uh, beyond it's just however much area lives between, uh, between these two functions here. All right, so let's do another example. This time we want to compute the area between the curves for the functions x of theta equals cosine of theta and y of theta equals sine of theta on the interval from 0 to pi over 2. Again, because we want to do the larger function minus the smaller function, we want to draw a graph and sort of see, see what's going on here. So let's think about what these functions look like uh, between 0 and pi over 2. So here's 0. Let's put pi over 2 here on the far right. We know that cosine of theta, uh, cosine of 0 is 1, 
and we know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So actually, let's maybe give ourselves a better graph here. This is all going to be in the first quadrant. So 0, we've got pi over 2. We know that cosine of uh, 0 is 1, and it's going to decrease all the way down here to pi over 2. Whereas, oh, and we should make this a color. Cool. So this is x of theta. Maybe it's a little bit weird to use x as a function name, uh, but it's good to get used to some different variables, even if they're unfamiliar. And in future courses, you will see x being used as a function name. Uh, so let's see. So here's x of theta. Uh, we also want to talk about y of theta. And so that uh, is going to be sine theta. We know sine of 0 is 0 and sine of pi over 2 is 1. So sine looks something like this. So here's y of theta. And we notice here that across this interval, uh, we want... we there's there's no function that's larger than the other the entire time. Sometimes x of theta is larger and sometimes y of theta is larger. So to compute this area between the curves, which we know looks something like this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to break this function or break this interval up into two pieces. There's going to be the piece where x is larger and the piece where y is larger. So uh, in order to find out what two pieces I should break it up into, I need to find the uh, theta value of that intersection point. Because once I've found that theta value, I'll know what the uh, two pieces of my, of my interval have to be. So let's, let's go ahead and solve for that intersection point. We want to think about when is cosine of theta equal to sine theta. And not only that, but we want to think about the fact that theta has to be between 0 and pi over 2 here. So there are a couple of ways that we could solve this. Uh, one way that we could do it is just by remembering uh, that if theta equals pi over 2, or pi over 4, excuse me, uh, then cosine of uh, pi over 4, or cosine of theta, is root 2 over 2. And that's exactly the same as sine of pi over 4. So we know that pi over 4 is going to be this intersection point, uh, just by remembering some facts about the unit circle. Another way that we could solve this is we could think about the fact that cos theta equals sine theta is the same thing. I could divide both sides by cosine. Uh, that would give me 1 on the left-hand side, and sine divided by cosine I know to be tangent. So if I want to think about where is tangent of theta equal to 1, I want to remember what does tangent of theta mean in terms of the unit circle. And tangent of theta, given an angle theta, is going to output the slope of the ray that I draw with uh, angle theta. So if I want to draw some uh, angle theta here whose slope is 1, I know that uh, the way that I need to do that is to make it... Um, oops is to draw this angle, which kind of uh, splits up this first quadrant into two equal pieces. And that's going to be the angle pi over 4. So uh, however, however I want to think about it, um, this angle here, this intersection point of these two graphs works out to be at the theta value of pi over 4. All right. Great, so uh, we have this intersection point here, and now what we want to do is we want to compute uh, this area between the curves. So the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the absolute value of x of theta minus y of theta dx is going to be, well, we need to think about the interval on which x is larger. And so in that case, I'll be integrating from 0 to pi over 4 of we have x of theta minus y of theta. And we also want to add on 
the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2 of y of theta minus x of theta. Oops, and not dx, but d theta. We're using theta as our variable of integration here. My bad. So now that we have the setup, we want to compute the actual integral. And in order to do that, uh, let's see. So we need to replace x and y by their respective definitions. So this is going to turn out to be, uh, let's see. So the integral from 0 to pi over 4, we know that x of theta is cosine of theta, and y of theta is sine theta. Uh, and now we want to add to that the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2 of y of theta here is sine theta, and x of theta is cosine of theta. So now we can antiderive and do these computations. We know that the integral of cosine is sine. We know that the integral of minus sine is positive cosine. We're evaluating from 0 to pi over 4. Uh, let's see, plus, now we need to uh, integrate sine, and the integral of sine is minus cosine. The integral of minus cosine is minus sine. And this time we're evaluating from pi over 4 to pi over 2. So we can go ahead and make these substitutions. This is equal to, uh, let's see, sine pi over 4 plus cos pi over 4. Uh, we want to subtract away sine 0 plus cos 0. Uh, now we need to add this second term here, so that is plus. So we're going to take minus cos minus sine and evaluate at pi over 2. So minus cos pi over 2 minus sine pi over 2. And now we're going to subtract this same thing, evaluate it at pi over 4. So minus cos pi over 4 minus sine pi over 4. And that should do it once we actually substitute in some numbers. So we know that sine of pi over 4 and cos of pi over 4 are root 2 over 2. So if I add them up, I get root 2. Uh, subtracting here, so sine of 0 I know to be 0, but cosine of 0 is 1. So I'm subtracting 1 here. Now, I am adding to this, uh, let's see, so I've got uh, cos of pi over 2, minus cos pi over 2, minus sine of pi over 2. I know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0 this time, but sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I'm uh, adding a minus 1 here. And finally, for this last term, I have uh, minus root 2 over 2 here in this minus cosine. I'm subtracting again root 2 over 2 here, so I'm going to have minus root 2 uh, inside this last group of parentheses here. So this will be minus minus root 2. Putting all of these pieces together, I have two positive root 2s, and I have two negative ones. And so I get that this area is 2 root 2 minus 2. All right, so a little bit messy in terms of the arithmetic, but we're certainly able to compute this uh, purple area, and so uh, this is kind of a, a, nice, a nice tool for us to have. One final example, we want to compute the area of the region bounded by the x-axis and the curves y equals at minus x squared plus 3 and y equals minus x plus 1. So in order to compute this area, we need a picture because we're not really sure what the setup of the integral is going to be yet. We don't know which functions are going to be larger or smaller or anything like that. So uh, let's see. So we have something that looks like this for our axis. And for the function uh, y equals minus x squared plus 3, we know to be a downwards facing parabola that's been shifted up three units. So it looks something like this. Uh, we know it's going to hit the x-axis here at plus or minus the square root of 3. 
for our other function, uh, y equals minus x plus 1, we know that that's going to hit the horizontal axis here at x equals 1. It's going to be a straight line with slope minus 1 and, uh, and vertical axis intercept positive 1, so it will look something like this. So the area that we're looking for here, being the area bounded by the x-axis and these curves, so if we're using the x-axis as one of my bounds here, uh, and these two curves as the other bound, then the area that I'm looking for is going to be this, air, this region here that's bounded by all three different pieces. So what I'm looking for here is to, well, compute the area of this region. In order to do that, again, I need to recognize which function is larger, which function is smaller. And I see here that, again, I'm going to need to split this up into two different pieces because my larger function, my upper bound on this region, is the red function on kind of the left half of the interval, and it's the green function on kind of the right half of the interval. So again, I'm going to need to compute the area of this region by splitting this up into two different integrals. And the way that I'm going to split it up depends on what the x value of that intersection point is. So in order to compute the x value of that intersection point, I want to find out when is minus x squared plus 3 equal to minus x plus 1. This is a uh, quadratic relation here, so I need to solve for x. Uh, so adding everything to the right-hand side, adding or subtracting, I suppose, we'll have a positive x squared. Uh, we'll have a minus x, and I've got a plus 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. Factoring this out is going to give me x minus 2 times x plus 1. And this is going to tell me that my x values are either 2 or minus 1 here. Now, I have two values for x, but I know that the intersection point that I'm looking for here has a negative x value associated with it. Or at least it should be the smaller of the two, uh, because this other intersection point is x equals 2. So this one that I'm looking for here is going to be x equals minus 1. So now what I want to do in order to compute the area of this purple region is I need to integrate from minus root 3 to minus 1. Uh, and I also need to add to that another integral from minus 1 to positive 1, because uh, x equals minus root 3 is the smallest x value that I'm looking at x equals positive 1 is the largest x value that I'm looking at in this region, and x equals minus 1 is that point where we need to split it up. Now, for this uh, left integral here, from minus root 3 to minus 1, I want to think about what's the largest function. Well, the largest function here is this uh, red curve, which we know to be the quadratic, minus x squared plus 3. And maybe I also want to think about what the smaller function is going to be, but the lower bound, so again on this uh, interval from minus root 3 to minus 1 here, the lower bound is just the horizontal line y equals 0. So I'm kind of subtracting away uh, 0 here, which I guess doesn't do very much to the actual function. Similarly, on the second interval from minus 1 to positive 1, I'm looking at the larger function here is the linear function, which is uh, y equals minus x plus 1. And I want to subtract away the lower bound. The lower bound is again the x-axis, which is the function y equals 0. And so I'm subtracting away 0. So in fact, uh, this is equal to, let's see, so the integral of minus x squared plus 3 is going to be minus x cubed over 3 plus 3x. I'm evaluating from minus root 3 to minus 1. Uh, let's see, so now I'm also adding to this the integral, oops, we can actually integrate. Um, so let's see, the integral of minus x plus 1 is minus x squared over 2 plus x. And if I want to evaluate this from minus 1 to 1. So if you take some time and plug these numbers into your calculator, you wind up uh, with, oh, let's see here. We're going to end up with minus 2 thirds plus 2 root 3 
which is approximately 2.80. All right, so we have done a number of examples here. Uh, shortly, we're going to figure out an alternate approach for computing areas of some of these regions in the plane.